The epilogue to Saint John is interesting to say the least. It's intricate, it's ingenuous. It describes or depicts the scene uh, almost after 25 years of John was born. John's dauphin is now King Charles of France and we see there a news, a piece of news has been brought to Charles that in yet another enquiry, John has been cleared of all the allegations and charges that were brought against her before she was burnt at stake. It's brought by Martin. The king, Charles, is happy not because John is exonerated, but because now his claim to the French throne is more secure than ever. That is, it cannot be said that he came to the throne, reascended the throne with the help of a witch. And then when the person who brought the news says that he is more worried about John, then Charles, a dolphin, says something very revealing. He says that, don't be worried about John, because you are not bigger than John. You cannot take care of John, nor can I. She was unique. She was one of her kind. And we are lesser mortals. And she is always ahead of her time, she was. And if now she is brought back from heaven, all the people who are now celebrating her will burn her again within six months. That means Shaw is of the view, possibly he is also presenting as his self-image, his intellectual self, that Joan was a person much ahead of her time, much, much ahead, avant-garde, advanced avant-avant-garde, we can say. And people are not ready to accept her then. And even if she is brought to light, they will not accept her. Now, the scene changes a little and there is a, a dreamy thing, surreal thing, a spiritual, magical thing, and then Joan herself appears after being dead for 25 years. But then Shaw is a rationalist, and Shaw makes that Joan say in the epilogue that she is not a ghost, but she is a product of King Charles' dream. And all other people who were involved in her killing. But remember, this is a play without a villain. There is no typical villain in the play, as I have explained in another talk. It's a system, the clergy, you know, feudalism. No individual can be singled out as a villain as such. Anyway, they are all there. I'm discussing different things. All have now made peace with John. And suddenly then, we have a person appearing there in 1456, France, the scene is from. A person with a dress of the 1920s, he comes, gentlemen. They all laugh at him that you are in fancy dress because they don't know 15th century people, they don't know 20th century dress. And he laughs at them saying that you are in fancy dress and then says, see, I don't have much time to discuss these frivolous issues. I am on a serious mission. The topmost body of the Catholic Church has canonized Saint John as a saint among the venerable because 1920 Saint John was Joan was canonized and Joan surprises others by saying that and asks that how is it that you are saying my claim to sainthood has been finally accepted by the Catholic Church I never made any claim in the first place any such claim as such here lies Shaw's originality because Shaw is trying to, as I said in my other talk, portray her as a secular humanist, secular fighter and all that. And her divinations, hearing the voices, these are coincidental. And like Hamlet said, you know, he wanted to test the ghost story by the play within the play. Similarly, in this play, St. Joan is always seen as giving rational or secular reason for her moves along with this thing. So this was more Shaw's doing, perhaps. And But then what I wanted to say is that this is a very postmodern thing. It's not it. 
breaking chronology, bringing a 20th century person to a 15th century scene and that too it is in dream. So the epilogue is very very interesting. And then finally the message is the same with which it had opened the epilogue that people are not ready to accept John as she was. And then slightly contradicting her statement that she had not made any such claim, it ends with the statement John's John's cry that, O oh Lord, when will the earth be ready to accept your saints? Because saints, proper saints, are never accepted by people, at least not when they're alive. Like Jesus or Socrates also, though not a saint philosopher, uh, all great people killed, murdered, conspired against, especially in the you know, European tradition, with us, not so much there. Professor Radhakrishnan had said something very interesting. I will discuss some other day. There is no time. But so it ends with this epilogue, ends with this statement of John, how long, how long, how long will she or others need to wait before people on earth become ready to accept their saints? And this is the question that Barnard Show asks ourselves, are we ready to accept our redeemers? Not in the spiritual sense, but then our true leaders, you know, people who really want to do things for us, we do not accept them. We do the opposite. So that is why the epilogue is very significant.